Um, so generally, I would try to keep most of the low frequencies out of it. So the sub has the, has its own space. Uh, and just like EQing and stuff mainly. So if I, uh, for instance, turned off all of these, it pretty much sounds cool anyway, probably. But if we turn this on, it just sounds a little brighter and a little less like low mid, uh, like less clashing in the lows basically. But yeah, I mean, these sounds generally coming out of Serum these days are super bright and aggressive anyway, so. Do you use any compressors or sidechain compression on the whole group? Yeah, there, there is a sidechain compressor on here. And I think there's actually sidechain compressors on all of, well, some of the sounds as well. So they're being, some of them are being doubly sidechain compressed. And I actually don't ever sidechain to like the kick and the snare individually. I always sidechain to like a separate channel that I call SC input. And I just have this tiny little click sample in there. Um, which is only being sent to the sends, but if I send it to the master real quick, you can kind of hear sounds like this. And then I just mimic what the kick and the snare are actually doing. And then, um, yeah, and then I can like... So no multiband on the entire group? Uh, no, not on this particular group. But, uh, but I mean, I could, maybe. The song's not finished yet, so maybe by the end of it, we'll decide that our ears are dead enough that it needs to be even brighter. And then... <laughs> like, to me, that sounds too aggressive now, you know? Like, that's just super bloating out the highest heart. Yeah. But now I've taken it off, I have excitement bias. And I think it's, you know what I mean? Like when you make something bright and then you bring it back and then you're like, oh man. Yeah, yeah, that's. And then you start referencing against all your friends and measuring dicks and shit. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, yeah, it's just a matter of, uh, I, I just get it sounding good, like how I think it sounds good on my system. And then maybe at the end when I'm doing the mix, try to decide based on referencing and other tracks of mine and, and people that I know and stuff that I know sounds good on big systems like Tipper and stuff like that, sort of start chucking it in and, and just figuring out like what, um, what I would need to, to make it sort of stand up against all the current stuff that's out there without destroying it too much. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.